Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Locking Your Success Trade and Market Update for December 30th, 2012. This is going to be our last trade update for this year. And the year is ending on quite an interesting note with all this fiscal cliff stuff going on. And it has shaken the markets up a little bit towards the end of the week last week. And we can take a look at how things are going. First, let's take a look at our longer term charts. As far as the charts are concerned, we are still in a very, very bullish uptrend on our longer term weekly charts here. We have our support area down here at around 1375. We had this nice little up move and now we're coming back. You can see what kind of, it kind of looks like we could be putting in some sort of a topping pattern. We have a lower, uh, we have a high here with a higher high and now a lower high. So uh, should we sit in a lower low, that would be fairly bearish, especially since we're breaking into this trend line. However, like I said, longer term, we are still looking very bullish. If, and this is the SPX, by the way. If we come into our dailies on a one year chart, our daily, you can see the topping pattern kind of coming together here. We can see that um, we have made this lower high we are breaking some shorter term support levels. Uh, breaking the low of this uh, very bullish candle that was put in here on Thursday would be pretty bearish. Uh, as of right now, we really don't know where the market's going uh, shorter term. It's going to be uh, dependent on how the market reacts to whatever happens to come out of Washington. And as of right now, I think it's Sunday night, I don't think that there is any news whatsoever other than it does not look good for any kind of a deal. It'll be interesting to see how the market reacts to that. Uh, and considering the pending news, I really have no idea where the market's going to go short term. Um, we have a lot of ideas where it may go longer term. And if this news uh, ends up being bad, and the market decides to take the news poorly, whichever way these guys vote, then I would be looking for a move into this trend line down here. At least to the 1370 level, possibly a little bit lower to the 1360. I would tend to expect this low here in the 1350 area to hold uh, any down move, but um, we'll have to wait and see. So I wouldn't be looking to, for a market crash, but we are possibly looking at a very substantial down move if the market does not like uh, what comes out of these decisions. If they do like what comes out of the decisions, we are setting higher lows, and our next higher low will probably result in a higher high. I think we back out of here longer term. We do have um, a nice little, we have our all time highs up here at 1576. And I think good news, we go to all time highs, by the way. So if we come in here and draw this out, this would probably be a target up in here around the 15, uh, 1500 area. Should we get good news and the market decides to come up, I think we will break right through the prior high here and continue higher. Um, if the market decides it likes what's going on, if it decides it does not like what's going on, then like I said, we come to this trend line. And if there's just something minor and it's gonna be confusing people, where it kind of satisfies the market and doesn't, then we're going to run sideways. So, like I said, we'll see what uh, see what uh, they come up with next week. If we come back and we look at the Russell, actually, why don't we look at everything while we're here? Taking a look at the NDX, the NDX is has been basically the weakest uh, of everybody here, and we have broke one of our major uptrend lines, which isn't necessarily a terrible thing. It just means this incredibly large trend is slowing down, just like when this one broke here, because initially we had a trend line up in here, right? It kind of broke sideways. We had a bit of a sell-off, and it reset to a, uh, a horizontal, uh, which had the horizontal uh, support point, and it continued to go higher. So that the the break of that trend line wasn't necessarily bearish. It was bearish short term, sure, but for, for the longer term, it just means the trend's slowing down. That may be the same type of thing here. We are putting in what appears to be uh, forming as a topping pattern. And again, bad news is going to bring us right down. Uh, on the NDX, I would say it comes down to the horizontal support level, which is 2400. We get bad news. We get good news. We'll, this this guy's probably going to continue to struggle for a while. 
and eventually end up at the old highs. With the Dow, we still have a very, very bullish trend. You can see it is slowing down. And bad news here, again, we're looking at horizontal support levels. We are currently at our diagonal support level, which means, like I said, a breakdown uh, brings us probably to this area here, 1250. A hard breakdown probably will bring us to our more major area at around 12,000. And back to the good old Russell. Our uh, first target to the downside would be this area right here. If we zoom into the daily, this is setting up for, this is actually a quite a nice um, ascending triangle pattern here. And if this breaks to the upside, then we have a nice little price target for that. But, uh, you know, we'll worry about that when it breaks. We'll set the price target. But to the downside, our immediate first target is going to be this 820 level, which should act as some sort of reasonable support. Depending on the timing of the other indices coming to their major levels, this may change. But uh, if we get a hard breakdown, we're probably coming down to this trend line down here. So... I look for an 820 level under bad news, which is only another 12 points. If we get some serious movement in the markets, then we may be looking all the way back down here at 790, which would be an interesting run. And of course, we are holding a very, very steep daily trend line. I would say, out of all the indices on a daily level, the Russell was looking the best, it's looking the strongest. And this is poised for a fairly large up move should we get good news uh, right up into old highs. And like I said, I, I am predicting here that is dependent on, again, the news that comes out of uh, Washington over the next week or two. All right, so that is the read that I have on the market right now. Let's take a look at our positions. Uh, I am starting to do this in option view because I think our swim lines are just being so crazy lately. I don't even trust um, what I'm seeing there. So here is our... M3 position for January. This actually looked much, much worse uh, when the markets were open on Friday. One of the things that you will, uh, that happened is we're having, if we take a look at, which is of note, we should try to look at um, the VIX, or in our case, the RVX, because we trade the Russell. We have had, over the last six or seven days that the market's been open, a very substantial increase in the in the in the um, volatility index. We've gone from 19, almost to 25. Uh, I see a resistance area here of we do have a slight resistance area of this old high, which is what we came up to. If we get some continued um, questions in the market, we're probably coming between 26 and 27, which would be a eight uh, point rise, which is very substantial. That would bring us up right into here. This area here uh, at 2750 is a good resistance point. Uh, if we get the uh, the bad news, which will hurt our trades further, if uh, the market really starts crashing, we may end up uh, <laughs> fishing for this 35. But we're hoping that doesn't happen uh, anytime soon. Anyway, this breakout is significant. It is bearish, and that we held it for the week. Uh, that does uh, lend to the downside of the market. But like I said, that's just fear around the fiscal cliff. As far as the uh, opens on Monday, one thing you should be aware of, the futures look like they're up. However, I believe, if I read this correctly, um, that most of the sell-off happened after the market close on the ESs, which means our fair value is going to be quite a bit different from what our futures are showing us. And this, I think, dropped almost 10 points uh, when it opened, and I'm not sure where they're going to calculate fair value of. We may see a positive uh, future number and a gap down in the morning. So just keep, keep that in mind. This isn't necessarily uh, meaning we're going to open flat tomorrow. We'll see where these go, though. Uh, okay, so that was just a note. So let's come back to our positions here. And... We are showing that we're down about $859. If um, I do go into Backtrader and we come back to 3.30 on Friday, you will see that um, I was down significantly more. I think at the close, it was showing down, yeah, 
And, you know, this is all, you have to realize this when you're training these, this is all mispricing due to volatility levels and the fact that everybody's buying puts. And we do have, we are short puts in this 820, 800 area. So you're going to get a sharp increase in time value. If that uh, pressure backs off, the value will come right back up into this and it'll be looking like, it'll be looking really nice. Uh, let's take a look at, actually, let's take a look at all of our, uh, of our trades as of 4.30 on Friday. So here we are, 4.30 on Friday. This was showing down 9.74. And this is what the position was showing here. Again, if volatility lightens up, this money will come right back. As a matter of fact, this trade will probably be positive if um, if, if volatility lightens up and we don't get much of a price movement. And let's go to our bearish butterfly trade for January, which is uh, in a great deal of pain as of 4.30 on Friday. Again, this trade would be, uh, I wouldn't be surprised with up money uh, if the volatility lightens up. The only issue with this trade is that volatility is so high, or the, the spike in volatility towards the end of the day had put this down. Matter of fact, it may even be pushing, the 4 o'clock number may even be pushing us. Clo yeah, well, we're even closer to maximum loss numbers here. So I'm aware of that when I'm trading this, that my T plus zero line, to me, I call it artificially depressed because of volatility. If I have to trade out of it, yeah, I'm going to take that loss, but... Um, Realistically, all we're going to need is for the volatility to lighten up, and this will actually, most of this money will come back into the trade. And I think if we close this and open our matrix back up, it's, oh, so it's act, so this one's actually showing us down 14,000 after hours. So we'll have to take a look. Uh, basically, with this position here, any uh, significant movement to the downside, and we'll probably end up closing it. We'll have to see how fast this comes back. Should we get, um, you know, I'll let it run a little bit, but should we get a, a flat market or, or an up move, then you'll see the money come back in this very, very quickly. If we see the volatility continue to rise and we get further down movement, then we may end up having to uh, close this guy out. And as far as our February bearish butterfly trade is right here. This trade is actually doing quite nicely. Even with the volatility rise, we are um, we're experiencing a... Uh, you know, a, a decent profit coming into this. So very happy with this trade. And that is all we have as far as trades. The only one that's in real pain is the bearish butterfly. I'm not crazy about the N3 position with the volatility. If we get a really big move, this close to expiration, it's kind of a pain in the neck, but still likely to work out. So we'll see how that goes. And um, I would say there is a 75% chance we are going to get stopped out of the bearish butterfly for the month. Uh, we shall see. I will keep you updated with any changes in the positions. I hope everybody has a safe and happy new year. And I will talk to you next year. Thank you and good night.